Blade Runner introduced us to Rick Deckard, the futuristic twin of film noir's jaded detective. Two years later, the cyberpunk movement took flight with William Gibson's seminal book, Neuromancer, which featured a heist gone wrong. Ever since, riffs on film noir and crime seem to go hand in hand with the cyberpunk genre. Lacuna is one of the many games which uses the archetype of the cyberpunk detective, a genre which includes the ill-fated cyberpunk 2077 and, of course, the notable 1997 Blade Runner video game. Where many games fall over is in the crime aspects of the investigation. Too often there's a magical detection device which scans the room for you. These spidey sensors are an overused feature of modern gaming and takes away some of the experience of actually being a detective, where the clues are essentially handed to you through X-ray vision. Thankfully, Lacuna is not that game. I haven't felt more like a detective than when playing the 2021 indie game Lacuna from Digitales Interactive, because the puzzles force you to come up with challenging but logical conclusions. The game is not a long game, but not taking your time in investigations early can have a detrimental domino effect on the rest of the game. I spent a lot of lacuna puzzling through the problems in my notebook before I even dared to lock in my conclusions. But boy was it satisfying when I got them right. While lacuna promises a sci-fi noir game, it's reluctant to use the title cyberpunk here even though I do think it tucks into that film noir side of cyberpunk very well. It opens on Drovia while playing a young girl named Mira. For me, the opening was the weakest part of the game. I'd been sold a detective game and here I was playing a little kid doing what was essentially a tutorial level. While you get through it fairly quickly, it took me aback given my expectations. I wondered if this would have been better as a media item or a news broadcast during the game. However, it's really worth paying attention to the information given here about the planets and the local Saviant religion. I found myself late in the game trying to remember which planet was which and who did what. And because it is quite a complex plot for such a short game, it's worth paying attention here. Given the complexity of the story, I found it really helpful to take notes as I played. After the brief prologue on Drovia, you find yourself playing Neil Conrad, a classic hard-boiled agent for the CDI, divorced, dated with life, and putting his job before his relationship with his daughter. While it's a bit of a cliche, I didn't mind it here because I quite liked the way the relationship was played between Catherine and Conrad. With the assassination of Drovia's foreign minister, Conrad must track down the killer, which leads him to uncover a planet-spanning conspiracy across the solar system. Many of the perpetrators of the crimes are forced into it through poverty, and there's a clear moral commentary here on extreme capitalism. The rich live in luxury, and the poor below in a den of drugs, vice, and crime. Harking back to cyberpunk's roots in the 80s, there is, of course, an evil corporation. While I suspect we've moved beyond these archetypes in crime storytelling, it goes with the territory of omni-consumer products and Wayland yutani One of the most exciting and interesting puzzles in Lacuna is trying to figure out the appearance and identity of the assassin. This was a challenging puzzle because the information kept changing as you progress the story. Delving further into the clues reveals more and more, and you'll need to use your powers of deduction to figure out what the assassin really looks like. You'll need all the clues and research at your disposal, and you will find yourself referring back to your notes. And I did really like this about the game because I don't like it in games when all of that lore and information doesn't serve a purpose or you kind of want to skim read through it. Here you really need to pay attention to all the facts that you've been given. Notably, there is no save file for you to go back and change your choices. So if you make a mistake early on in the game, there's no going back from it. And that will have flow on effects to the rest of the game. I did like this aspect because choices do matter in Lacuna. And some of those choices are very morally gray. You will think long and hard before confirming your conclusions and hitting that send button. As a crime fiction lover, I really appreciated the depth of this game as a crime story. My brain got caught up in the convoluted complexities of the mastermind behind Lacuna's crime. And I got every puzzle right except for the last one, mostly due to the fact that I completely overthought the ending. I've read far too many crime novels when it's clearly not the obvious answer, which is the truth. 
and so therefore ignored what was obvious and I had uncovered in order to accuse somebody else of the crime. And I have severe regrets on that because there is no save file. As someone who enjoys looking at narrative design, I did appreciate how difficult some of these choices could be. Would you lose your job if you chose a certain path? Would somebody die? Would you choose to withhold information in order to prevent more deaths? And these are complex questions that are explored within the game. The pixel art graphics hark back to point and click adventures and I particularly liked the way that the city grew upwards from the train stations which Conrad uses to navigate the city. Excellent lighting effects and environmental depth add significantly to the noir atmosphere. The music by Julian Kolbus is a notable game soundtrack as the plaintive piano and jazz tracks really set the tone for the game and I really enjoyed it. As soon as I opened this game up, you get hit by that great soundtrack and it really made me feel enmeshed in this world here. There's little voice acting here, save for the occasional voiceover by Conrad himself, but the text dialogue is tight and you'll appreciate that you're not scrolling through endless dialogue choices here. It's really sharp and a lot of the choices that you have to talk to people are timed. You won't have a lot of time to make those decisions. So you really need to think carefully before you go into interrogations and review your clues, just like any detective actually would. If you enjoy choice-based detective games, then Lacuna is definitely worth checking out. The quality puzzles provide even the most experienced gamers with a challenge. And while it labors a little under the shadows of the genre's archetypes, the complex plot makes it one of the better examples of sci-fi detective games that I've played. I'm Kat Clay, I'm a writer from Melbourne, Victoria. I love talking about video games, tabletop gaming, nerd stuff, writing, all of those things. If you like those too, please hit subscribe to support my channel. And thanks so much for watching.